The biggest problem that my clients come to me with, and it crosses a myriad of different behaviours, but the biggest issue in this day and age with dogs is lead work. Nobody wants to have to walk their dog on a lead. It's a stressful situation. And the reason why we find it so difficult is because 90% of your dog's life is spent off lead in the house, relaxed, the dog can do whatever it wants. And then for about 10% of its life, every day, for about an hour, we say, hey, come here, come here, sit there. I'm gonna put this on for no reason and drag you down the street. Now, it's very easy to teach a dog to walk on a lead if you can be consistent for a week, one week. But the first thing you've got to do is get rid of this. <laughs> Flexi leads are the biggest problem for dogs and they are the lazy man's dog training kit. I understand that they're, they're advertised everywhere. You're likely to have one of these somewhere in a drawer. It's probably the first thing you go to buy when you get a puppy because you think, oh my goodness, that's great. The dog can go anywhere. I've got all this lovely lead to use. But in reality, if you think about what the dog's going through, any time that this lead comes out, the dog is going to be pulling. And from their perception, attached to that collar, they're sensing that sensation of pulling to get a little bit more lead. So if you want your dog to walk on a lovely loose lead, bin this, chuck it away, it's not helping you at all. The only way you can really reliably use a, a flexi lead for training a dog is if you can pull it off and lock it off so that it can be loose. But this tiny little bit of string here means that you can't see it in the dark, it's gonna trip up a granny, it's not a good look, okay? So bin the flexi lead, number A. Then what we need to get is a normal dog lead. Your average dog lead looks something a little bit like this. So this would be your average sort of dog lead, and that's fine, that's nice, but you might think, my goodness me, that's ever so short in the grand scheme of things. Your dog can only go approximately a foot and a half ahead of you, um, and then it's in trouble because then it will be pulling you. So what I always advise you go out and get is what I call a training lead. So if you look at the difference between a training lead and a normal dog lead, let's just measure these up against each other, okay? The training lead is already um, about a foot longer than your average dog lead, but the beauty with a training lead, let's get rid of this normal dog lead for a second, is that I can unhook it from itself and make it even longer. Okay, I can tie it back up to itself up here. Ta-da, ta-da. And have a really long bit of lead. Now what I've got is at least two foot, three foot more room. To teach a dog to walk nicely on a lead, we have to explain to the dog that as soon as it starts pulling, as soon as it feels that contact point on the collar or on the harness, you're gonna stop walking. Stop walking. If you keep walking, your dog's gonna keep pulling because it's getting what it wants. It's getting to explore the environment. It's getting to sniff hither and thither, okay? So what we've really got to do is teach a dog on a nice long lead that as soon as it starts to pull, you're gonna stop walking. And then all I do is I invite the dog to come back to my side with a tasty treat in my hand, and then I'm gonna start walking again. If you've got into the habit of walking your dog um, on a flexi lead or on one of these leads, the dog's going to understand that the only way to get where I'm going is, is to pull. Um, so it's really important that you can give loads of positivity for any second of the day where your dog is on a lovely loose lead. Okie dokie. Bearded kit can go a long, long way when it comes to teaching your dog to walk on a lovely loose lead.